Over the past few weeks, it's been hard to watch the news, listen to the radio, or pick up a paper without some mention of the troubles of former CBC personality Gian Gomeshi. What was once seen as a CBC issue has morphed its way into a national debate involving Parliament when it was revealed that two NDP members of the House of Commons had been sexually harassed by two Liberal MPs. Quick action on the part of Liberal leader Justin Trudeau to suspend the MPs from caucus pending an investigation set the Hill abuzz. The NDP also found itself on the receiving end when former staffer Ian Capstick revealed that he was sexually harassed by MPs. All of a sudden, sexual harassment in the workplace caught up with the old boys club on Parliament Hill. And it wasn't limited to Ottawa with the explosive revelation that former Deputy Prime Minister Sheila Copps was sexually assaulted early in her political career as a provincial Liberal MPP. One can also recall her being the subject of taunts by former Conservative Minister John Crosby, who called her baby in the House of Commons. Copps would later use that remark as part of her book called Nobody's Baby, A Survival Guide to Politics. For too long, there has been a pervasive attitude of go along to get along. The unwritten rule in politics is like that of Las Vegas. What happens on the hill stays on the hill. Most members don't live in Ottawa. They commute from their ridings and spend long days in cramped offices on Parliament Hill. Add to that a culture that invites MPs and their staff to an endless amount of receptions and parties with free or cheap booze, and you put in place the right ingredients for trouble. Except for one thing. There is no consequences for bad actions by MPs. Staffers are too terrified of losing their jobs and having to return home in shame if they complain about being harassed. If they do stand up and complain, then it goes to the secretive Board of Internal Economy, where it is usually swept under the carpet with a settlement, dismissal, and non-disclosure agreement. It's time to put this practice to an end. Staff and MPs deserve a better process where they are not seen as the problem, but as the recipients of unacceptable behavior. The House and other legislatures need to be brought into the 21st century. Working for the people should not result in second-class status for staff. Like any other workplace across the country, staff should be able to operate in an environment that is healthy and productive without harassment. And that's the point. That's all for this edition of The Point. Catch us next on December 1st. Follow us on Twitter at Watch The Point. Like us on Facebook and check out our podcast at watchthepoint.lipson.com. I'm Marcel Weeder. Thank you for watching. <laughs>